Thank you for being with us tonight. Donald Gregg still serves as your trusted advisor. He was deeply involved in running arms for the Contras, and he didn't inform you. Now, when President Reagan's trusted advisor, Admiral Poindexter, failed to inform him, the president fired him. Why is Mr. Gregg still inside the White House and still a trusted advisor? Because I have confidence in him. And because this matter, Dan, as you well know, and your editors know, has been looked at by the $10 million study by the Senate and the House. It's been looked at by the Tower Commission. The Rodriguez testimony that you put on here, I just think it's outrageous because he was totally vindicated, swore under oath that he never talked to me about the Contras. And yet this report you're making, which you told me or your people did, you have a Mr. Cohen that works for you, was going to be a political profile. Now, if this is a political profile for an election, uh, I have a very different opinion as to what one should be. But Don Gregg w works for me because I don't think he's done anything wrong. And I think if he had this exhaustive examination that went into, was gone into by the Senate and by the House, would have showed it. And you've impugned the, uh, my integrity by suggesting with one of your little boards here that I didn't tell the truth about what, what uh, Felix Rodriguez. You didn't accuse me of it, but you made that suggestion. And other people were in the meeting, including Mr. Nick Brady, and he has said that my version is correct. And so I find this to be a rehash and a little bit, if you'll excuse me, a misrepresentation on the part of CBS who said you're doing political profiles on all the candidates, and then you come up with something that has been exhaustively looked into. Mr. Vice President, what we agreed to or didn't agree to, I think you will agree for the moment, can be dealt with in another way. Let's talk about the record. You say that we've Let's misrepresented your record. record. Let's talk about the record. If we've yeah. misrepresented your record in any way, here's a chance to set it straight. Right. Now, I just set it straight on one count because you implied from that uh, little thing, I, I have a little monitor sitting on the side here, that I didn't tell the truth. Now, this has all been looked into. This where where do we imply that, Mr. Vice President? Well, just here on this board where you had the idea that Bush says that he uh, didn't tell, uh, uh, didn't tell, uh, the contra, didn't hear about the Contra supply from Felix Rodriguez. Mr. Felix Vice Rodriguez testified under oath. He has been public, and you could have at least run a little picture of him saying that I never told the Vice President about the Contras. I'm asking for fair play, and I thought I was here to talk about my views on education or on getting this deficit down. Well, Mr. Vice President, yes. we want to talk about the record well, on this, because it, well, let's talk the, about the, the framework here That's is that one third, about, of, one third of the Republicans in this poll, yeah. one third of the Republicans, and, and one fourth of the people who say that, you know, they rather like you, believe okay. you're hiding something. Now, if you are, here's, hiding a, here's a chance to get it out. You know what I'm hiding? What I told the President. That's the only thing. And I've answered every question put before me. Now, if you have a question, what I do it? have one. Please. I, I have one. Please follow You have away. said that it, if you had known, you said that if you had known this was an arms for hostages yes. swap, that you would have opposed it. You also said exactly. that, that you did me, not know ask, that may you... May I answer that? That the wasn't right a question. It was yes, a statement. it was a statement. And Let I'll me ask the question, it. if the I may, first. The president created this program, has testified or stated publicly, he did not think it was arms for hostages. And that's it was the only later that... It, and that's me. Because I went along with it. Because you know why, Dan? Because I that wasn't the question, when I Mr. saw Mr. Mr. Buckley, uh, heard about Mr. Buckley being tortured to death, later admitted as the CIA chief. So if I erred, I erred on the side of trying to get those hostages out of there. Mr. And Vice the President, you set the, you set the, the rules Congress. for this, this talk here. I didn't mean to step on your line there. But you insisted that this be live, and you know exactly. that we have a limited amount of time. I, that's why I want to get now, my share in here the on something other than what you want to talk the about. The President has, has spoken for himself. I'm asking you to speak Please. for yourself, which you have not been willing to do in the past. Well, and sure. if, I'm, if I may suggest it, that this is what leads people to say, quote, either George Bush was irrelevant or he was ineffective. He said himself he was out of the loop. Now, let me give you an uh, example. You said ask a question. May I explain out of the loop? No operational role. Go ahead. Now, you've said that if you'd known it was an arms for hostage swap, you would have opposed it. You said the first you knew it was an arms for hostage swap was in December of 1986. When the correct? whole thing became brief to me by Senator Durenberger. Exactly. And the proximity of arms to hostages much closer. But, Mr. Than Vice President, you went to Israel in July were... of 1986, yes. and a member of your own staff, Mr. Craig Fuller, has verified. And so did the only other man there, Mr. Neer, Mr. Emeron Neer, who's the Israelis' top anti-terrorist man. Yes. Those two men were in a meeting with you and Mr. Neer not once, but three times, three times underscored with you that this was a straight out arms for hostage swap. What they swap. were doing. Now, Read how the do memo. You, how do you Read the memo. What I have they to. were doing. How can you reconcile that you were there, Mr. Neer, underscored three separate occasions 
that it was an arms and hostage swap and told you you were dealing with the most radical elements in Iran. You were dealing straight away with the Ayatollah Khomeini. Was told what they were doing and not what we were doing. And that's the big difference. And Dan, I express my concerns and reservations about that. That has been testified to under oath by uh, Mr. Poindexter. And it's been confirmed that I had reservations and spoke up by Don Regan. In fact, he said the other day that I expressed him to the president. That's I correct. I don't discuss what I talked to the president because there's a principle involved. It has nothing to do with Iran Contra. It's the principle of confidentiality but between Mr. the president Mr. and Mr. Vice the vice president. president. Mr. Vice President, yes. the president himself has said he wants all the facts out. He gave up such things as even his own diary. Every principal, including he Secretary Schultz, he diary gave up some of it. Well, Dan, well, let's be careful here because well, you're. Yes, sir. I want you to be careful, Mr. Vice President, because I will the problem be careful, here. But I the problem get my here side is that out. you repeatedly sat in the meetings. You sat in a meeting in which Secretary Schultz, in the most forceful way, registered his objections, and I then you said you never heard anybody register objections. If it was the most forceful way, I've heard George Schultz be, be uh, very, very forceful. And if I were there and he was very, very forceful at that meeting, I would have remembered that. I don't remember that. Then and how that do you explain that you I'm can't saying. remember it and the other people at the meeting say because he was maybe apoplectic? I wasn't there at that point. You weren't, the, you weren't in the meeting? I'm not suggesting. I'm just saying I don't remember it. I don't want to be argumentative, Mr. Vice President. You do, Dan. <laughs> no, this is not a no, great sir, night because I, I want to talk about why I want to be president, why those 41% of the people are supporting me. And, and Mr. I Vice don't think President, it's these fair questions to judge a whole career. It's not fair to judge my whole career by a rehash on Iran. How would you like it if I judge your career by those seven minutes when you walked off the set in New York? Well, now, Mr. would you like that? Uh, Mr. I Vice have President, respect for you, but I don't have respect for what you're doing here tonight. Mr. Vice President, I think you'll agree that your qualification for president and what kind of leadership you'd bring to the country, what kind of government you'd have, what kind exactly. of people you'd have around him is much more important than what you just referred to. I'd be happy well, to hold I want to be that. judged on the whole record. Well, and you're not and I'm trying an to set the record straight. You Mr. invited me to come here to talk about I thought the whole record. I, I want you to talk about the record. You sat in a meeting with George Schultz. Yes. He got apoplectic an when he found out that he you were you and the president were being party of sending Reagan. missles to the ask, Ayatollah of Iran, uh, uh, the Ayatollah of Iran. Can you explain how you were supposed to be the uh, you are you're an anti-terrorist expert. We Iran was officially a terrorist state. You went around I telling that, Dan. You, you, I wanted those but Mr. I Vice wanted President, Mr. The question Buckley is, out of there. But you, you made killed, us hypocrites in the face of the killed. world. How could you go, how could bad. you sign on to such a policy? Well, and the question how, is, the what does that tell us about your record? Signed on to it. The same reason the president signed on to it. When a CIA agent is being tortured to death, maybe you err on the side of a human life. But everybody's admitted mistakes. I've admitted mistakes. And you want to dwell on them. And I want to talk about the values we believe in and the experience and the integrity that goes with all of this. And what's I going to do about education? And you're, there's nothing new here. I thought this was a news program. Well, I had what hoped, Mr. New? Vice President, you would tell us to whom you expressed your reservations. Yes, I did. When you expressed them Point and what the reservations were. under oath. What were He's the reservations? Got, reservation about getting the control of an operation in the hands of a foreign power. Don Regan stated the other day, and I never heard a word of it on CBS, that the vice president, in the presence of the president, spoke up about his concern about the whole cover of an operation being blown and secret in people that you're dealing with, uh, putting their lives in jeopardy. And you weren't and concerned about sending always, missiles to the Ayatollah Khomeini? Covert, every covert action. You but I, the president has explained right. that. The committee looked at that. And so there's nothing new on this. Mr. Vice President, I appreciate you joining us tonight. I appreciate the straightforward way in uh, which you